This is Greg Kovach standing next to four-time Mr. Olympia winner Jay Cutler. He literally made him look like a child. Standing at 6 foot 4 and over 400 pounds, it genuinely scares me how big he was. Greg Kovacs was one of the freakiest mass monsters ever. Many critics said he had the potential to become better than the likes of Ronnie Coleman and Arnold Schwarzenegger. So why did Greg Kovacs not become the best bodybuilder ever? In this video, we will be going through the obstacles and challenges he faced in his career. This is the rise and fall of Greg Kovacs. Born in 1968, Greg Kovacs grew up in Ontario, Canada. Raised in a supportive family environment, he developed an early interest in sports, particularly hockey and weightlifting. And after a couple of months of hitting the weights, it was quite evident that Greg was going to be much bigger than everyone else around him. His passion for weight training intensified during his high school years, where he started dedicating a significant amount of his focus to bodybuilding. Who knew what Greg Kovacs would turn out to be? Early success. Eventually, Greg obtained his professional bodybuilding card in 1996, which marked a major point in the sport's history, showcasing his exceptional prowess and setting him on a trajectory towards legendary status. Kovacs' physique was a spectacle, an embodiment of immense size harmoniously coupled with visible muscularity and definition. He completely dwarfed his competitors that day, being over 50 pounds heavier than second place. This level of mass and aesthetics was a rarity in the bodybuilding world. Positioning Kovacs as a future grade of the sport, his measurements both in the off-season and in competition condition defied conventional limits. His arms measured at an astounding 26 inches off-season and maintaining an impressive 25 inches in contest shape, coupled with a chest span of 70 inches and 35 inch quads in contest condition. This showed the unparalleled blend of immense size and discernible muscular detail that earned him his pro card. Greg Kovacs' ascent in bodybuilding sparked immense excitement about his upcoming clashes against the EFBB elite. Enthusiasts debated how his colossal physique would challenge traditional ideals of symmetry and aesthetic detail favored by IFBB judges, foreseeing the potential impact his presence might have on the sport. However, Kovacs' monumental physique also prompted contemplation within the bodybuilding community. While his achievement of the pro card was undoubtedly remarkable, it sparked discussions about the significance of such extreme size in competitive bodybuilding. Some pondered whether his relentless pursuit of colossal mass might overshadow the traditional criteria of symmetry, proportionality, and intricate muscle detailing. Others wondered whether it would even be possible to consistently maintain such a ridiculous physique. All these factors helped build great anticipation of how he would fare against other IFBB competitors. Would Greg be able to use his phenomenal size to carry him to Mr. Olympia stardom, or would he crash and fall like so many before him? 1997 Night of Champions The 1997 Night of Champions marked a significant turning point in Greg Kovacs' illustrious bodybuilding journey, signaling a pivotal moment that would impact the trajectory of his career. This event, anticipated with eagerness and curiosity, carried the weight of expectations surrounding Kovacs' unparalleled physique. However, it also served as a crucial point where the challenges of Greg Kovacs emerged. The 1997 Night of Champions was the competition that altered the course of his story. It was here that subtle tremors of change began to reverberate within the bodybuilding sphere. While Kovacs' colossal size had been his hallmark and his source of admiration, the event highlighted a notable change in his approach. There was a significant lack of focus on the refining of his physique and more of an inclination towards emphasizing sheer size. He had sacrificed his aesthetics for more mass, a decision which would change his career forever. The event served as a canvas where the nuances of Kovacs' physique became subject to scrutiny. The shift in emphasis from refining muscular aesthetics to chasing monumental size became increasingly apparent. While Kovacs' sheer mass continued to astound and captivate audiences, questions arose about the implications of this change and focus on the intricacies valued in competitive bodybuilding. The Night of Champions unveiled a potential dilemma. The clash between colossal size and the finer elements of symmetry, proportion, and aesthetic flow. That night sowed the seeds of subsequent challenges and changes in Kovacs' physique. It marked a critical phase where the focus on sheer size began to ruin the elegance, detail, and proportion of his physique, laying the groundwork for a narrative arc where the consequences of this shift would become more and more prevalent as his career continued. Focus in physique. Greg Kovacs' physique, once revered for its monumental proportions and visible muscularity, began to undergo noticeable changes attributed to a pivotal factor, his excessive eating habits. Kovacs' physique, once a marvel of balance between colossal size and muscular definition, encountered a noticeable challenge in the form of a ballooning midsection. 
His earlier displays showcased a towering stature that commanded attention, but at the Night of Champions, subtle indications of a large midsection began to surface. As if scrutinizing through the lens of a judge at a bodybuilding event, the pronounced change in Kovac's midsection became increasingly evident. The inevitable impact of consuming an estimated 13,000 calories a day. The excessive eating while fueling Kovac's colossal mass unintentionally became a double-edged sword, contributing to the diminishing aesthetic appeal of his physique. This eating was helping him put on size, but it got to the point where Kovac was sweating just from sitting down because his body could not keep up with his size. From the standpoint of physique analysis, this shift indicated challenges as the balance between a well-proportioned physique and sheer size began to tilt. The impact of this shift extended beyond a numerical assessment of mass. It compromised the finer nuances of Kovac's physique that once resonated with judges and enthusiasts, and we see how this shift impacted him in the 2004 Arnold Classic. The bloating midsection became a focal point that detracted from the overall visual appeal Kovac previously commanded. Judges assessing bodybuilders' physiques prioritize a harmonious blend of size, symmetry, and aesthetic detail, and the ballooning midsection starkly contrasted with the desired aesthetic flow. This was the first of the challenges Greg faced in his career. 2004 Arnold Classic transitioning to the 2004 Arnold Classic, Kovac's physique encountered further hurdles. The positive aspects such as his colossal size and formidable mass remain prevalent. His arms retain notable size. The earlier concerns with his midsection showed little improvement. Instead, the ballooning midsection became more conspicuous, showing early signs of palomboism. From a judging standpoint, the lack of refinement in this area continued to detract from the overall visual appeal Kovac once commanded. Additionally, while his upper body showcased immense size, his legs appeared comparatively underdeveloped, creating a noticeable disproportion. This disproportion affected the overall balance and symmetry of his physique, hindering the cohesive flow that judges seek in assessing competitors. He placed 13th and walked off stage in shame and embarrassment. Whilst many people were disappointed with Greg's performance, many still believed that if he could get his midsection under control and some more mass onto his legs, he would still have a chance for Olympia stardom. 2005 Toronto Pro The 2005 Toronto Pro marked a pivotal moment in Greg Kovac's bodybuilding journey, offering a nuanced glimpse into the challenges and complexities that characterized his formidable presence on stage. As Kovac strode into the spotlight, his massive physique, a hallmark of his career, immediately captured the audience's attention. However, beneath the surface of his imposing presence lay a narrative of struggle and a quest for validation within the competitive realm of bodybuilding. In the landscape of professional bodybuilding, the Toronto Pro presented a canvas where every nuance of a competitor's physique was scrutinized. For Kovacs, whose reputation as a mass monster preceded him, the expectations were monumental. The judges, arbiters of an industry in flux, sought a delicate balance between sheer size and the sculpted aesthetics that were becoming increasingly emphasized. Kovacs, with his towering height and colossal weight, embodied the epitome of mass, yet the evolving standards demanded more. The 2005 Toronto Pro became a theater of contrasts, a stage where Kovacs' gargantuan size clashed with the growing emphasis on proportion and symmetry. The judges, tasked with discerning the subtle nuances of physique, raised concerns about Kovac's proportions, his monumental midsection and the perceived imbalance in the development of his legs. He had failed to do what many believed he could. This was the last competition that Greg competed in before he died. He failed to even make top 16. For Kovac, this event encapsulated not only a battle against his competitors but a struggle to reconcile his identity as a mass monster with the shifting sands of bodybuilding standards. The very attributes that had propelled him to fame, his unprecedented size and hulking presence had become a problem. The Toronto Pro was the end of his once so promising career. Death of Greg Kovacs The untimely passing of Greg Kovacs in 2013 cast a somber shadow over the bodybuilding community, marking the premature end of a towering figure in the sport. His demise echoed the darker realities and immense pressures inherent in the world of bodybuilding. Kovacs' passing, attributed to heart failure at the age of 44, stood as a stark reminder of the perils associated with extreme body transformations pursued in the quest for size and mass. It served as a poignant testament to the toll that relentless pursuit of physical perfection can destroy the human body. The tragic loss of Kovacs underscored the profound sacrifices individuals make within this competitive realm, where the pursuit of unprecedented size often ignores the consideration of long-term health consequences. 
His passing was a poignant reminder of the fragility beneath the monumental physiques, shedding light on the dangers of pushing physical limits beyond what the body can endure, encapsulating the melancholic side of a sport that demands unwavering dedication at the cost of one's well-being. Greg Kovac's physique, once celebrated for its immense size and muscularity, encountered distinct challenges that significantly influenced his overall appearance on the bodybuilding stage. Throughout his career, he had problems with his midsection and legs which he sadly could just not seem to fix. If Greg Kovacs was able to sort out these issues with his physique, would he have been one of the best of all time? I guess we'll never know. Now you know the story of the rise and fall of Greg Kovacs, but if you want to learn the story of a gargantuan mass monster who made even Ronnie Coleman look small, click the next video to learn more about their incredible career and physique.